So here we are on the forest floor and we need to get back out onto the green there. There's a canopy above us and we've got to make sure the ball goes low. Now it's so tempting just simply to take an iron and hit the ball way off the back foot with a big steep divot. The problem with that is that sometimes it compresses the ball in a way that the ball jumps up and hits the canopy. So it is possible to hit a low shot with a punch but it's not the word that we like to use when you're playing these shots at Woburn. We don't want to punch and an abrupt blow because we can't control that. And even if it does come out low, we don't know what it's going to do on the first bounce. So we go back to our chipping mechanism and shorten the club by pulling the club up our sleeve. So I've lost wrist hinge. But also, I've lost forearm rotation. With a long club, the forearms rotate freely, particularly with the woods. Well, that's great when you're trying to hit a 35, 40 yard fairway. But when we're just threading the ball through trees here at Woburn and keeping the ball low, by pulling the club up the sleeve, we get rid of forearm rotation. So the whole thing quietens down. Again, try and imagine that you're playing off a hard surface. You do not need to contact the ground heavily. If you can take the ball clean, it will come out. So you can see the twin pines close together, either side of which two small flags. That's sort of the corridor that I'm going down but I'm keeping the ball below the canopy. I pull the club up my sleeve. The blade of the club is between my feet, not the ball. So here we go, back and through, taking the ball as cleanly as I can. Okay, now you can see the ball has just missed the two trunks that I was aiming at. So the shot went very accurately, very low, and I can promise you that when the ball landed, it would have released and gone forward. If you play this shot off the back foot with a steep divot, generally the ball will dig its toes in or skew off to the left. If you play these shots out of the bottom groove, slightly thin, and you'd be amazed how much distance you can manufacture from just that small chipping action. You can probably get 120, 130 yards of distance because this ball is going to scamper like a scalded cat when it lands. So here we go again. Here's the full scale setup, pull the club up the sleeve and walk in, ensuring that I've still got good posture. So again, back and through, blade and ball only, drive the ball low. So again, you can see how accurately I've sent the ball to those twin pines and the ball hasn't ballooned up on me. If you plan a windy day on a Lynx course, then the shot I've just shown you is very useful for that as well. So, let's imagine I've got a similar scenario. I'm in the forest, but this time I've got to get up and over the canopy. So, I'll go around the circle a little bit and I'll hinge my wrists, all the opposite of the low shot. So I want a high shot here, I'm going to hinge my wrist very early and use my wrist very creatively and the line is going to be still pretty accurate. Here we go. Now I doubt the cameraman caught that but I got that six iron up about 60 feet in the air and pretty much in plane. So that's a pretty good demonstration. The low shot comes from no wrist hinge and a thin strike and the high shot I open my stance radially, hinge the wrist early and use my right hand for all I was worth and I brought the ball up. Simon, the cameraman, just pan up and just show the viewers how high the pine tree was. That's at least 60 feet in the air and it's only about 30 yards away from me. So it's quite remarkable what you can do if you understand ball position and you know which part of the body does what. So if you learn nothing else from this piece, you now know that non-wristy is a low shot and active wristy is a high shot. Mm -hmm.